Hey everyone, this is Robbie. So I am back um, taking gross anatomy right now, actually, which takes up pretty much all of my life, so I have had no opportunity to make a video. Our third unit, however, is on the skull, so I thought it would be an awesome opportunity to try to put one up. Um, practicing it myself, at trying to educate other people, uh, I think is going to be a big help not only to me, but hopefully uh, even help a few people out there as well. So. Uh, what I've got here is an actual human skull, um, and here's the mandible part. What It doesn't quite fit right, and it does not stay together, so I'm going to do this the best of my ability, so my apologies in advance. Um, I don't have the best model here. Didn't really have too much of a choice in the matter. Uh, I just had to work with what was given. So, Anyways, just as a disclaimer, as always, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I haven't studied this for 20 years. I'm studying it right now. Um, you know, what I go over here, you always want to double check for accuracy in your own texts, uh, with your own professors, with whoever you're working with. Um, make sure that, you know, you verify everything on your own as well. And a lot of the features I'm going to go over are in my own syllabus that I have to know. So it's a little bit self-serving, but hopefully in the process, you know, I can help you out as well. Uh, just by going over everything here for you. So again, we're just going to start with the basic skull, some of the basic features, and I'm going to break it down pretty much bone by bone and go over each feature for each bone. So starting off um, with the top part of the skull, or the superior part, uh, this is the frontal bone. The frontal bone. Now, when you go posteriorly a little bit, you're going to run into two very large bones on either side, and those are called the parietal bones. The parietal bones. So you've got frontal, which is your forehead, it's on the front or anterior aspect. Parietal, which is on the lateral aspects. And then going towards the back here, you've got the occipital bone. The occipital bone. And Let's just do the top part here for now. So with the occipital, you'll see it kind of forms almost a triangle here. Anything below that triangle for the most part is going to be the occipital bone. Now you'll also see these lines that divide up the bones, and that's where your skull came together as you developed. Um, these lines, of course, each have names. So this line right here is called the coronal suture. The coronal suture. Now, you might uh, recognize that name um, when you were learning just the basics, like frontal plane, sagittal, one of those kinds of things. Uh, frontal plane also is called the sat or, uh, coronal plane, and that puts a line straight through the body in this lateral direction. So hopefully that can help you remember that one. So coronal suture, this suture right here running straight down the middle is called the sagittal suture the sagittal. So again, coronal, sagittal, and then back here, the one that looks kind of like a Y, an upside down Y, that is called the lambdoid suture. The lambdoid suture. One additional thing I want to mention is the points at which these lines come together on the top of the skull. And this point here in the front, in the anterior aspect, that is called the bregma. Again, that's called the bregma. And then the point on the back where they come together, that is called the lambda. If you've seen the uh, symbol in math, whatever, <laughs> not a math person, um, it looks kind of like a Y, so maybe if that helps you. So anyways, just to review really quickly, frontal bone, parietal bone, parietal bone, occipital bone, coronal suture, Woo. <laughs> try that again, coronal suture, sagittal suture, and on the back, lambdoid suture. That point right there is called the lambda, and then up here you've got the bregma, that point. So on the frontal bone, I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail here because we have a few different features. Um, so we've got 
the first thing is called the frontal eminence, and that is on basically on either side of the forehead you've got these slight prominences and it's really hard to see on this particular skull but they'd be kind of right around here and they're called frontal eminence or frontal eminences in a plural I guess <laughs> now when we come down here so again think about where we are that was our frontal bone it's carrying over to the top part of the skull this all here is still the frontal bone all of this stuff, even over to here a little bit, and then on the top part of the orbits. So, with this area, there's a few more things that we have to know in particular. Uh, one of them is called the superciliary arch, and if you can see on the camera here, there's two little prominences right here. It kind of looks like where your eyebrows would be. Um, but those are called the superciliary arches. There's also something called the glabella, which is the elevation right in between the superciliary arches. So the glabella and superciliary arches. Um, the supraorbital notch or foramen is also on the frontal bone. And on this particular skull, it's very hard to see, but right about here and right about here, there's two tiny little notches. And on some skulls in a lot of pictures, you can see much clearer definitions of this. So a lot of this is kind of degraded in, over time and that kind of thing. So, um, But again, that's called the supraorbital notch or foramen, and basically that... Uh, transmits the supraorbital nerve, meaning above the uh, orbit, um, from V1, which is the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, its cranial nerve. So again, supraorbital notches or foramen. Um, next one is zygomatic process, and the zygomatic process is of the frontal bone is basically just this small portion of bone that juts out and that's going to connect to believe it or not the zygomatic bone so hopefully that all kind of makes some sense um, moving on to the parietal bone there's also a few things we need to know here and again my apologies this doesn't quite match up So on the parietal bone, you've got something called the parietal eminence, which is a elevation kind of near the center of the bones, and it's right about here. So it's this big kind of bulging out part on each side of the parietal bone. So again, that's a parietal eminence. Then you've got something called the superior and inferior temporal line, and it's hard with the skull because it doesn't quite match up, but this line right here on the frontal bone, that's kind of where that line starts, the temporal line. But there's a superior line that basically wraps around like this. And then there's also an inferior line that wraps around like that. And what they do is serve as attachment sites. The inferior line... Um, let me say that correctly, <laughs> sorry. The inferior temporal line, uh, that serves as an attachment site for the temporalis muscle, whereas the superior temporal line is a line of attachment for the temporal fascia. So there's probably a mixture of both kind of attached in there to both lines. Um, very hard to see on the real skull, but they are there. And that whole thing forms what's basically called the temporal fossa, which is where your temporalis muscle goes, which then attaches down here on the uh, mandible. Kind of hard to picture all that from this, but um, that pulls your mandible up. So, moving forward, we talked about some of the other lines on the parietal and frontal bone, like the uh, coronal and sagittal bregma, those kinds of points. Um, I want to take you to the inside of the skull cap really quick. There are some grooves for blood vessels. Anytime you see those on the inside, that's the grooves for blood vessels. 
you have the fovea for arachnoid granulations. And you'll probably see this a lot better in your books, but these kind of holes and bumps right here and grooves right along the uh, sagittal suture. Um, and that's basically where uh, cerebral spinal fluid gets absorbed um, from that subarachnoid space. And depending on how deep you get into the physiology, you can go into that some too. But uh, for now, and then lastly, there's something called the sagittal sulcus, which along the sagittal line, you'll notice that there's basically like a ridge on either side. And the sulcus is kind of that depression in between. So, and again, that's called the sagittal sulcus. So I'm going to stop there for now, and uh, in the next part we'll get into the uh, occipital bone, temporal bone, and uh, sphenoid if we have time.